Welcome back to Fundamentals of Chest Radiography. This is lesson 8, so that means that we are almost done with the semester. Today we will talk about pneumonia and pneumonectomy. Let's begin by talking about consolidation. A consolidation, or an infiltrate, or in other words, airspace opacity, means that something occupies the alveolar space that is normally taken up by air. Now that something can be inflammatory cells, water, cancerous cells, blood, or transudate. The tricky thing is that all of these may look similar on a chest x-ray, therefore knowing the patient's history is vital. In clinical practice, the two most common causes of an airspace opacity are pneumonia and alveolar edema. Pneumonia can be classified according to its etiology. It can be bacterial, viral, fungal, parasitic. It can be classified according to the source, so it can be community acquired and therefore a little bit easier to treat, or it can be nosocomial. Anatomical classification is also known, in which regard we differentiate between a bronchopneumonia, a lober pneumonia, or an interstitial pneumonia. We'll talk about these later. What should we expect to see on the chest x-ray? First and foremost, you need the two views because some pneumonia will hide behind the heart or below the level of the diaphragm and you won't see it on the PA chest x-ray. Usually we see some loss of transparency, therefore an opacity. However, this might be absent in about 15% of the elderly. A pneumonia in the apex is rare because this area is well aerated. The most common sites are the middle lobe and the lower lobes on both sides. The affected lung usually doesn't change in volume. In some cases, it might increase in volume due to the fact that the affected segment or the affected lobe will get swollen due to the infiltrate and the inflammatory response, so it'll get convex. And later, the inflammation might spread to the interstitium. We need to differentiate between an atelectasis and a pneumonia. Later, I will have a bonus talk on atelectasis. For now, I just want to say that Usually, an atelectasis respects anatomical borders like fissures. There is naturally loss of volume in case of an atelectasis. An atelectasis will appear homogeneous and it'll dislocate the fissures and the surrounding normal parenchyma. A pneumonia, on the other hand, rarely affects just one segment or a lobe. We usually won't see any change in volume. A pneumonia is rarely homogeneous and it usually has blurred edges and it doesn't dislocate fissures or any other normal anatomical structures. And then here is the anatomical classification of pneumonia. Let's start by talking about lober pneumonia. Lober pneumonias are usually caused by streptococci and you need to know your lober anatomy in order to recognize a lober pneumonia. At least one edge of the disease is sharp. So take a look at this image and you see a heterogeneous consolidation in the upper third of the right lung and you can see that one edge of the disease is sharp. This is caused by the fact that the disease doesn't cross the horizontal fissure and the rest of the disease is heterogeneous and the edge is blurred. Now this type of disease spreads through the connections between the alveoli, so the pores of Kahn, and the connections between the alveoli and the small bronchi, that would be the channels of Lambert. There are usually air bronchograms because the disease doesn't get into the bronchi, so they remain air filled and the bronchi appear as dark lines against a white background. Lober pneumonia usually produces the silhouette sign. That just means that the border 
between the pneumonia and the neighboring structure becomes invisible or blurred like you can see it here that you cannot really tell where the right main pulmonary artery begins because it's uh, next to the opacity caused by the lower pneumonia so this is a positive silhouette sign bronchopneumonia is typically caused by staphylococcal pneumonia and uh, it begins around a lob lobular bronchi and it'll spread through the bronchi so it will not only affect the alveolar space but the bronchi as well therefore you will not see the air bronchograms and since it spreads through the bronchi it can easily get into different lobes or it can cross the midline and as in this case it can get into various other lobes or segments as well and this will cause the patchwork quilt appearance of bronchopneumonia and as I have mentioned air bronchograms are not characteristic of this disease interstitial pneumonia are usually caused by viral or mycoplasma pneumonia so these are the atypical pneumonias and what you will see and you can see here on this chest x-ray is the reticular pattern like we have seen with lymphangitic carcinomatosis but with lymphangitic carcinomatosis it was more localized and we also saw this pattern with cardiac edema but with cardiac edema we saw peribronchial coughing we saw the curly lines we saw pleural effusion and cardiomegaly none of which we see here um, this might also be caused by sarcoidosis but sarcoidosis causes by lateral hyalur lymphadenopathy which is not apparent here and if we know the patient's uh, history and uh, we know that this patient is an AIDS patient then we will uh, likely suggest that this is a pneumocystis carinii pneumonia around the pneumonia is uh, more common in children however infrequently we see it with adults as well it usually appears in in a lower posterior segment and as you can see it here it appears like a mass so it can be a little bit menacing however it will contain air bronchograms and its size will change quite rapidly it's important to know the patient's history and uh, over here you can see around pneumonia in the upper segment of the left lower lobe so, so this is the sixth segment of the left lung some pneumonia might cavitate and if we see a cavity then this is called the basket with the handle sign so this is the full basket which has a handle on top and it has some contents down here so due to the fact that within the cavity there is fluid and air you see the nice horizontal interface in between them now several other diseases cause cavities such as carcinomas i brought you this example here there is this large cavity in the lower third of the right lung however the wall appears quite nodular and thick which is typical for carcinomas um, versus pneumonias they have a thick wall but it's it has a smooth inner margin tb would have a thin wall with smooth inner margins a word of caution regarding pneumonia i know that we do not treat the chest x-ray rather we treat the patient but you should know that if you see a pneumonia that fails to resolve by 50 percent in two weeks or completely in four weeks then that's considered to be a non-resolving or a slowly resolving pneumonia and in those cases especially if uh, your patient is patient is old you should consider um, 
and this as a result of a, of a primary process such as cancer. Pneumonectomy is seen frequently, so to say. So during um, pneumonectomy, uh, one or two ribs are removed and then, and then the lung is taken out. The hemithorax left behind uh, fills with fluid within the next two weeks and then that fluid will gradually get replaced by fibrous tissue. Now, since the fibrous tissue shrinks, it'll pull its surroundings towards itself. That's why, for example, here, after a left-sided pneumonectomy, you see that the mediastinal structures, the tracheal air column, are all pulled towards the left-hand side. Now, secondary signs of pneumonectomy are wider coastal spaces, a deeper extending diaphragm and a hyperextended lung. So this image as that you can see here is called a whiteout. However, it can be due to several other processes such as complete left lung or right lung atelectasis, doesn't matter which, which lung. It can be due to complete pneumonia of one lung or extensive cancer and it can also be due to pleural effusion. However, if you have pleural effusion, due to the fact that fluids are non-compressible, you wouldn't see the shift towards the whiteout. You would see the whiteout or the pleural effusion pushing the mediastinal structures away from itself. So that helps us in differentiating the cause. All right, this was uh, talk number eight. I hope you have learned a lot and I, s I will see you next time.